If you love indie films and you love art house cinema and international cinema, then this is the video for you. I'm going to show you a few places you can go to stream those things. We're going to get off the beaten path a little bit. I'm not going to talk about Netflix and Hulu and Prime Video, although you can find some great stuff there as well. But I'm going to show you six dedicated apps for those who love independent cinema. So let's dive in. All right, as we get started, I just want to remind you, we come out with videos like this all the time. So if you enjoy what you see here, then give it a like and definitely subscribe. We would appreciate it. All right, now, as far as independent film stuff goes, I've got six apps to show you. Technically it's seven, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and call it, you know, six, and I'll tell you why in just a moment. But the first ones that I'm gonna show you are where you can go to watch indie stuff for free. Now, the first one is Film Rise Indie. This is a separate app. There's Film Rise, all sorts of different categories that they've got, uh, but this one they sort into a different app itself. Film Rise Indie, you can go download this one, and when you go in here, this is gonna be commercial supported. So if you're familiar with Film Rise, it's just like any other Film Rise that you've seen, but this one concentrates on independent cinema, you know, like Steven Seagal's The Patriot. I guess it's gonna be the hard one, you understand? Damn it, don't shoot. All right, so I'm, I mean, I'm kidding. Hey, I'm not judging if you love Steven Skull movies. My only point is Film Rise is not gonna be up to the standards that some film festival devotees are used to, but they will have some good stuff in here. And like I said, the, the nice part is it is 100% free. So you are gonna find some things to watch commercial supported in this one. The next one, it's another free app, kind of technically. Yes, it is free, Canopy and Hoopla. They both operate the same way. What these ones do is they tie your library, your local library membership into the app. So uh, my local library goes through Canopy, or at least it did. Here's the thing, I can go in here, but my membership lapsed because I haven't switched over to my new uh, library system yet. But the point is when you get in there, these are going to give you access to anything that you would have access to at your local library. They have it digitized, uh, and presented for you through these apps. So you would have to check and see which app your library goes through. It's generally gonna be either Canopy or Hoopla. They both do the same thing. And that's why I said, yeah, it's seven apps technically, but yeah, we're really just talking about six. So I wish I could get in there and show you a little bit better, but I can at least go to their website and get a little uh, <laughs> get a little shot there to show you. But it's, uh, yeah, that's generally what it is. So those are your free options. Now. I'm gonna move into the really, really great options. Uh, the Criterion Channel and Movie. We'll get to Movie in just a second, but the Criterion Channel, this is the gold standard when it comes to independent film uh, streaming. The Criterion Channel is amazing. It's like continuing education for film students in a way. They've got a great collection of classics and international cinema. And what they do with the Criterion Collection is they have Criterion editions of a lot of these movies and so you can go into, uh, you know, say Boyhood, and it's not only going to give you the film itself, but it will also give you these little features that you can get alongside it. It's kind of like DVD commentary tracks. And obviously that's not something that you generally get when you're going through, say Netflix or Hulu or something like that. Getting those behind the scenes, the commentary tracks uh, is, uh, is really fantastic. And the Criterion collections are going to be a great way for you to you know, get an education on whatever subject or director you want to. So if the Criterion channel interests you, it's 11 bucks a month, or if you pay yearly, you get it for 99 bucks a year. So a little bit of a discount there. Moving on to Mubi, this is a very interesting one. And this is one where if you appreciate having content curated for you, this is the app for you you know, so long as you like independent cinema and, you know, classic cinema. But basically what this does is every day, movies, film experts, however we want to define that, they pick a new movie to put on their service and then you have 30 days to watch it. So what that means is there are always 30 movies in movies service. So if I click through here, watch, I can go through the entire thing just like that. That is what's on movie. There are 30 films there. You can see this one is leaving at midnight. This one is gonna leave tomorrow. Uh, and then you can click through the rest. But essentially, if you're somebody who maybe you just like to watch a movie a day 
and you would really appreciate having some variety in your life and you don't have to choose, you know, you don't have to go through the endless scroll on Netflix or whatever to find what you wanna watch, let somebody else decide for you. So the way this works is you pay 11 bucks a month or $96 a year if you wanna go yearly and you get access to Mubi's collection. So like I said, it's a, a little bit different way to take in your cinema, but a pretty effective one if that's your style. So those are, in my opinion, kind of the, the best of the best, very different styles of how you're going to find stuff to watch on Criterion and Mubi. But let's move on to the other two. And I, I kind of put these in a category off to the side simply because there isn't a lot to distinguish them from the rest, but that doesn't mean that they're not great. First up is Indie Flicks. And like I said, this is really straightforward but they do give you some good categories to search through. Art house films, dramas, comedies, classics, etc. In fact, IndieFlix also gives a little nod to a free to watch without a subscription. Uh, not the best content that they have, but you know, if you do want to pop in and just watch something, it is there for you. So if IndieFlix sounds like it might be up your alley, $69 a year for that one. Very straightforward pricing on that. Speaking of straightforward, let's go ahead and flip over to Fandor. Fandor is, uh, like I said, kind of like IndieFlix. It's straightforward. There's nothing really distinguishing it like you get with the Criterion Collection or Mubi. You simply pay a price and you get access to the content. In this case, the price is either 10 bucks a month or $90 a year. So it is a little bit pricey on the, a pricier on the yearly category than IndieFlix. But I also like the way that they uh, organize their content. You don't get the kind of Netflix categories where you know you, you see a ton of those um, horizontal categories. Instead, they put their categories right here on one row so you can go through and, uh, and check out whichever one you want. Personally, I kind of like that form of categorization, but mostly that's probably just me. I don't know. Anyway, there you go. Six options for you to watch as much indie film and international film as your heart could possibly desire. I hope this video helped you out a little bit. If so, hit the subscribe button and the like button and all of that stuff. It helps out the channel. Uh, it helps my ego a lot, obviously. Uh, and I thank you very much for watching. We'll come back with more videos much like this one, ways that you can stream whatever category of movie or TV that you possibly want to. And I'll see you then.